Hey, what's up? This is Jenna from Tonight Alive, and you're listening to Torrent This with Dando. <laughs> Now, I'm joined on the line by the frontwoman of a Sydney band who, after releasing their debut album titled What Are You So Scared Of, back in October, have taken the pop-punk music scene by storm. They're leaving this weekend to begin their first European tour and will be returning to perform at this year's Soundwave Festival. I'm, of course, talking about Tonight Alive, and I'm lucky to be joined on the line by their singer, Jenna. Jenna, thanks for your time, and how's Keep things? going. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, everything's Bus- great. <laughs> Busy week? That was a big intro. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Busy week? Um, actually, quite crazy considering um, the past year. It's just We've been home for a couple of weeks over Christmas and New Year, so we've played a couple of shows, but other than that, just enjoying the sun. Did Santa bring you what you wanted? Um, yes, and that was just to, in, to come home for Christmas, really. And, oh, okay. But um, other than that, yes, very nice presents as well. <laughs> very sport. What was your New Year's resolution this year? Uh, to, uh, I guess, to be in my best form in every sense of the word, I guess, to yeah. um, push myself in every aspect, and um, that's something I've always felt strongly about, but something that I'm not going to make any excuses for this year. <laughs> you guys are playing an all ages show in Sydney this weekend, but then you're heading off to Europe. You must be pretty excited for that. Yeah, totally stoked. It's a, it'll be our first trip there, and it's just exciting to do something new. We toured Australia seven times in 2011, and, and America twice, and, and uh, that was like really awesome and very full on but I'm just excited to to see more of the world and it's something new. Do you know if you guys have established much of a fan base over there yet? I I couldn't tell you I mean I hear from sort of our fans on Facebook and Twitter but not enough to know really like what to expect so I think that's another part of why it's so exciting because we just I've never been to Europe at all. Okay. I'm not familiar with it at at all so I think that's going to be going to be pretty out of this world. Yeah, and you guys apparently have a big announcement for your European fans. We do. And I can't hear that yet, can I? I'm not sure what you're referring to, so maybe I should keep my mouth shut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just saw it on Facebook that you got a big announcement for all European fans. Well, I mean, it is no secret that this year we will be releasing our debut full length sort of worldwide. We're, we're going to um, be putting it out in, in a lot of other territories, so I'm sure it's sort of the release date that we're looking at there. You released your debut album, What Are You So Scared Of, back in October. How much has your life changed as a result of your success last year? Uh, um, I think things have changed in a way that we've sort of grown and moved forward rather than sort of saying, mm, my life's changed. I guess, I guess everything's sort of just moving forward and we're going with it. And um, I don't know. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's been... It's been a real ride and it's been a lot of fun but a lot of hard work at the same time so yeah I guess I'll leave it at that How much does it impact on like personal life? Do your friends treat you any differently now? No they, um, they're, the, they're the people that keep me grounded which is awesome yeah. <laughs> I've, um, I guess when you leave school and I've been at this my third year out of school now and that's kind of weird because I still feel I still feel like little I guess yeah. um, I guess you sort of you think that you're going to stay in touch with everyone, and I had a really close year group of like 80 girls. I was in at girls' school, by the way. Okay, yeah. And uh, we had an awesome year group, and you think you're going to stay in touch, and you you have every intention of it, but everyone's got their own life. So I don't know. I've got a couple of girlfriends back home, and um, and my family, and I, I guess I've got everything I need really in in that. I suppose things like Skype would be a lifesaver when you're on tour, yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite good. I get to talk to my little sisters and my mum. And then dad, but um, my, <laughs> my, we, we keep in touch us girls. So. Is the final product of the album, is that what you'd envisioned or are you like a perfectionist that's never 100% satisfied with their own work? And that's exactly what I am and that's exactly what all of us are, but we're very happy with the album. I, don't think, I think it just is a, it captures exactly where we were at that point in time. There's definitely, like, it was a year ago now that we recorded it and that's another thing that's kind of crazy to think, but I look at it and, um, and I... I know that there's things I would do differently now, but I think it was perfect for for where we were, and it was everything that we wanted it to be. So, did you guys record many songs that you left off, which you felt should or could have made it onto the album? We did um, three B sides after we re- we got back to Australia, and we we recorded the whole album acoustically, and then we did three B sides at Electric Sun Studios, where we recorded all of our other music besides the full length, and. Um, I I really really like those B sides, and now listening to them, I kind of. I kind of wish that we could do more with them, but at this point we're really just writing a lot of music, so I guess there's no point getting caught up on that. I'm just excited to put more out. <laughs> yeah. What would be your favourite track on the album? Because I know Amelia means a lot to you. Yeah. Well, I guess um, Listening and What Are You So Scared Of are two songs that really hit home for me. I feel like 
in in my songwriting, ever since I started when I was like 10 or something, all I've ever wanted is to just nail what I'm trying to say. Yep. And um, it's kind of rare that you get your words exactly right. And um, I guess those two songs really say it for me. They sort of capture what our message is as a band, which is to not waste your life and um, to know and to grasp your potential because everyone has the capacity to to do so much more with themselves and and the whole what are you so scared of concept is about not holding back yep. and um, finding out what it is that scares you and getting over it because really when when you think about it those things kind of aren't important yep. and yeah so that's what they're about and those two songs are mean that for me so yeah well I've read a lot of online reviews on the album and many of them have been really positive are these something you pay particular attention to I like to I like to read up on what people sort of have to say I I don't um I don't get too caught up in it but I am I'm quite interested um to hear the feedback because it's it's the people that listen to us that keep us going yeah so um I'm, I'm a curious person I like to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> how do you react to negative reviews um I kind of at this point I'm sort of laughing off a little bit because <laughs> I just know what it's like to sit back and and to have nothing better to do than to judge someone else and I think everyone sort of had that kind of experience and I guess there were times when it bummed me out like when we sort of started and I would get some negative feedback about us being female fronted and <laughs> you just want to be this you just want to be that but has that ever been an issue being yeah the, a little bit yeah which part are you sorry like you're, you being a front woman as opposed to a front man mm, um I have sort of always tried to let my position sort of bring out my dominant sort of aggressive side and use that to drive like being a front woman yep. and that sort of comes out on stage like I'm not an angry person but on stage <laughs> that's where it all comes out kind of thing so I mean it's ne I've never really been ridiculed for being a girl yep. but I think uh, at the beginning sort of it was easy for people to kind of not take us seriously because of that and also because we play pop music out of the hardcore scene like we come from a sort of heavier scene and the pop pop was sort of just starting to come back when we were when we started. So it was a little bit hard in the beginning, but I think we're we're just happy with where we're at, so it doesn't really bother us when people have something nasty to say. Do you think it's maybe helped you develop more male fans? What being being female fans? You no, know, you being obviously attractive and stuff. <laughs> um thank you, sir. <laughs> and um I think it's really funny when you see what, what kind of crowds we have. Um it's like we have young girls and then sometimes it's like young girls and then older guys. It's really funny how that happens. But, yeah. um, I don't know, we've actually grown quite a diverse sort of fan base and, and it's, it's really nice that a lot of the people that come to our shows, they really become our friends and we sort of are really close with a lot of them. It's, it kind of sounds cliche, but I think from the start we were always um, quite personal and we always hang out after the shows and yeah. we've never sort of put ourselves above anybody else, so... We've got a good relationship with our fans. Just say, what are you so scared of? Got some negative reviews when it was released back in October. Would this have changed the way you went about writing music in the future? Hmm. Um, I guess it would have if someone had something to say. Maybe. I, I, I try to take things on board and, and interpret it and sort of view it from a different perspective and see if I would feel that way as well. But I'm not sure. I, I can't really picture it. But the way we're writing music now, I feel, is a lot more developed and... Our songwriting has come a long way even since then because when you think about it, the album was recorded a year ago yeah. and some of the songs on the album were written a year prior to that. So, okay. so it sort of feels like we're kind of moving forward at quite a pace that's not, we're not catching, well, I mean, the album's not kept caught up to that yet. <laughs> yeah. well, you recorded the album in the States. Why is there such a gap between releasing it here and in the States? Um, I think we were just trying to sort out our label situation. We're signed to Sony um, worldwide, excluding North America, which we just signed a Fearless Records yep. and announced that. So I think um, we really, really, really wanted to uh, release everything at once, but it sort of was a bit impractical with our label situation. And, and having not toured in Japan or the UK or Europe and all these other places, it was sort of like we really needed to get out there and put a foundation out yep. there first before yep. releasing it. So. What was the experience like touring in the States? Did the audiences differ from back here? Or? Definitely. <laughs> it's so funny. We just got back a couple of weeks ago, and the first thing we did, I mean, we were home for a couple of days, but on Boxing Day we flew down to Melbourne yep. and played a show at a club, and um, it was like, oh, people like us 
they actually like us. It's okay. Like, yeah. we're doing okay. Like, it was funny because we just did a metal tour in, in America. And, um, man, it, it's, there's some tough crowds out there. But at the same time, their, their industry, like, their music scene is so different. It's so populated. Like, there are so many places to play, so many people to play to, so many venues. I find that Australia, and I think anyone would agree with me, Australia is, is sort of suffering in terms of venue and, and scene and crowds, like, people are less willing to buy tickets to come to a show. I'm not, I don't know why, but it sort of seems like that. And anyway, there's a lot of people out there, and I don't know, it's just, it was refreshing to get out to new people, and this was the second trip. Sorry, I'm talking so much, but... No, no, I prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> this was our second trip out to America, and the first time was great. We were sort of on a pop-punk kind of lineup, Yep. which was really good for us because... People responded very well. And mm-hmm. the second time, we were on a metal lineup. But because we'd been there before, at every show, there were a couple of people that knew us, which is, which is really nice, which is, which is reassuring. So was it a bit like, I don't know, sort of hit you? You, like, you, you play gigs here, and the audience is lovely, and you went over there, and all of a sudden, nobody knew who you were? Yeah, and it kind of is like that. But it's kind of refreshing to feel like you're starting again and know that you still have something to work towards. I mean, we will always feel like we have something to work towards, but it's kind of like... It's kind of like um, it just pushes you, and you really want to prove yourself. And I think that's a good—it's a good drive. Yeah. Yeah. What did you guys get up to in your spare time over there? We didn't have spare time. At, <laughs> okay. Like the first trip was awesome because we got to do such touristy things and sleep on the side of the road and like just—it was a great. On the trip. side of the road. Yeah. Well, I mean, not out. Oh, I mean, actually, okay. you know what? We did. We got out of the car. We we would park in car parks and get out and put our sleeping bags out in the car park and it was awesome like and in the morning when when people would start parking their cars we better get up (laughs) we had such an adventure and um but yeah the second time was um it was quite go 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 it was sort of there were a lot of drives and it was show after show it was probably like sometimes it was like nine shows in a row then have one day off and do it all again yeah so um I don't know. I guess there was a lot of drinking of beer. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of besides playing music. You're a beer chick? <laughs> Me? I, you know, I always hated beer until this past trip. Okay. Because um, every time the boys crack a beer, they try to get me to have a sip and try to train me a little bit, I guess. Now, trust um, me, guys, guys love chicks that drink beer, trust yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not much of a drinker to start with, but um, I've, I've started to appreciate a nice cold beer. <laughs> I'm getting into it. Were you shitting yourself when you played with Simple Plan? <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, my God. I was side stage watching them, and oh, it's kind of lame, but I got tears in my eyes, and I was like, I can't believe I'm standing <laughs> here right now. Like, this, like only two years, three years prior, I was, like, front row at the Horton Pavilion. Yeah. Like, singing every word and, like, frothing off them. So, yeah. to firstly, to meet them, to tour with them, and also to sing on stage with them, it's just out of this world. Like, I think that's probably one of my favourite tours we've ever done. Yeah. I really felt, like, so connected to it. (laughs) Do you think social media like Facebook and YouTube have helped you guys get your name out there? Yeah, I think initially it did. I think that's how we sort of started to get attention was when we made a... We put out a bunch of demos and got some local attention, but um, it wasn't until we recorded a proper EP and put everything up on the internet that we sort of got our name out. And we liked to make... We don't do it so much now, but we did a lot of um, update videos and sort of made it kept everything really personal and and um i think it helped us in the beginning but at this point we really don't rely on it and um i feel really adamant about that that we don't rely on the internet to gain fans rather yep. than just to stay in touch with them and it's great if people find us on the internet but i think what we um, feel most strongly about is our live show and and playing live i've noticed you're a huge fan of twitter Oh, you think so? Yeah, update like every hour. Really? Oh, it's just when I'm home and I'm, I mean, it's summer and I'm just sitting around. I've got, I don't know why I'm telling everyone what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I enjoy it. Are you still considering getting a tattoo? <laughs> yes, um, yes I am. I've, I've, since I was 14, I've, I've wanted the Trinity Knot tattooed on me, which, if you don't know what it is, it looks like a charmed symbol. Yep. And I've always wanted it for many reasons, but I think it stands out that after five and a half years, I still want that tattoo. <laughs> Where do you plan on getting it? Back of your neck? I've thought about that, yeah. I'm just trying to think of some way tasteful. I don't, yeah. My girlfriend's got one on the back of her neck. It looks good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I, I kind of want to do a, a moon, a sun and moon, or a yin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like being the only girl in the group? 
Um, fun. I like it. I don't really feel any different to them. They've always been my friends, and I've sort of always been influenced by the boys. So um, I guess they're my they're my brothers in a way. They're my best friends, and we're pretty chilled out. I'm as gross as they are. <laughs> I'm sure they would say the same thing. Are they protective when drunks are creeping on you at gigs? Yeah. Very protective. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I know that if I'm in a situation where I'm uncomfortable, I can just be like, I can just go up to one of them and I don't need to worry about anything. Just flick your fingers, <laughs> they come running. Snap the fingers yeah. away. Oh man, I'd hate that. <laughs> they do, they look after me. In your opinion, who's the best looking in the band besides you? <laughs> oh, I think they're all good lookers, don't you? Oh, I can't, oh, I can't comment on that. Come on. <laughs> hey, yeah, you can. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of man love. <laughs> Um, we're running a little bit low on time, so we've just got a couple more questions. No worries. Uh, what does 2012 hold for you guys once you finish Soundwave? Oh, uh, there's so many things that aren't announced that I'm so excited about, but a lot of international touring. So, yep. Um, that's going to be great. We'll be releasing the album in a few more territories, and we'll also be recording another album. So it's just going to be tour after tour at this point, but um, we're already halfway through writing the next record, and I just want to record it as soon as possible, so... I think that's what everyone can expect, and I guess a lot of shows and a lot of love. Have you got a poten- any uh, potential names for the new album? I haven't thought of that yet, no. But uh, I, for me, this is a big step. I've actually named the songs that I'm writing, which I never do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's first step towards that. And one last question I ask this to everybody. Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for all aspiring songwriters and musicians? Sure. I think that being honest and being real with yourself is the most important thing you can do in every aspect of your life. But also, as a writer, I think there's no point in trying to replicate something else or someone else or trying to follow a trend. I think as long as you don't get caught up in any bullshit in your environment and you just focus on what you love and figure out what you love, you have to write as much as you can. Every idea you get, write it down. Don't let yourself forget. I think that... It's so annoying to be told practice makes perfect, but practicing and doing it as often as you can is the only way you can get better. So be honest with yourself and um, do what you love and do what comes naturally to you. Don't force anything because it's not going to sound right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there you go. If you haven't already, make sure you grab yourself a copy of Tonight Alive's debut album, What Are You So Scared Of?, Check them out as they perform at this year's Soundwave Music Festival. And for all the latest news and info on the band, visit tonightaliveofficial.com. Once again, Jenna, thanks for your time and good luck thanks with the tour. Thanks so much. Thanks, dude. Catch you later.